Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome to our Creative Lab Stockholm. We continue our work linking every month in our face of light, invoking souls of our nations. Thank you for being together with the Hikal group and Klanshala group and the 2025 initiative in one circle. Over to you, Uta. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's a great joy to meet you all in during these silent days of the year as we are standing together on the mountain top. Our theme today is Between Light Superna and Our Struggling World. So we will use this Capricorn full moon to make ourselves ground ourselves solidly on the mountain top as the Ajna center of the planet and practice holding an overview from there. So in the first part of the session, we will look upwards, so to speak, align as practically as we can to the view of hierarchy, the view that hierarchy sees. It sees the planet in much larger cycles than we, we are able. And we know that they hold a conclave once in 100 years to assess the world situation and lay plans for the following 100 years. The last such conclave was in 1925, and the next one is just before us in 2025. Alexander has pointed out in a recent meeting that we students of DK are in actually quite a good position to encompass this large time span of the last 100 years. DK gave us many indicators and interpretations about the first half of the 20th century. And we in our own discipleship life, we have witnessed the second half of that cycle. So we are well equipped to stretch our awareness into this hierarchical centennial rhythm. And that's what we want to practice today in the first part, recapitulating the present cycle and standing consciously in spiritual tension towards this last bit, towards the magnetic point of the next conclave just before us in 2025. So just let us uh, remind ourselves that for decades, this year, 2025, has been an important reference point for our community, esoteric community. And we have been working towards it quite consciously. And this aiming for this, to have this signpost in the future has actually done a lot towards orienting and streamlining us as a world group. And in general, these rhythms, these cycles, keeping these rhythms that DK has indicated has helped us to organize ourselves as a world group. 
So now we can say that our intergroup heart is beating. We have quite synchronized, many of our groups have quite synchronized and uh, in the awareness of each other and also in our activities. And now, at the end of 2023, this point comes closer in 2025. We can sense more of a pull. So there seems to be a growing um, importance, a growing urge to recruit whatever we have built the telepathic sensitivity that we have developed between us and the spiritual tension that we are holding together from one point to another in, in, in these different cycles, full moon, new moon cycles, uh, astrological uh, happenings. So there is a sense that we are ready and that it is also important to to work more concretely now together during this last bit so yes to utilize the moon cycle and the solstices and equinoxes um, to integrate more fully to become more efficient in in working together so we would like to highlight one of these points because they seem important. Um, during the coming equinox, there will be a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus. It's actually from March 14 to April 17. And uh, the significance of this is that uh, Jupiter and Uranus are both rulers of Aquarius. And this happening in Taurus in the sign of the new group of world servers. So it's almost as if, you know, Aquarian energies are coming into our world group. So this conjunction invites us as a world group to gear ourselves more fully to the Aquarian vibration. And also Pluto is just now passing out of Capricorn into Aquarius soon. And that highlights even further, uh, puts more focus on our group life. So to become aware of these opportunities, learning to utilize these cyclic opportunities um, is enabling us to play a more conscious role in the externalization of the hierarchy, to work more, to bring ourselves into this work rhythm. So let us use the present mountaintop opportunity that we have today together in our council chamber of elders in training to align our hearts with our co-workers in the ashram and to swing our consciousness into their work rhythm. To swing our consciousness into into the hierarchical workflow. Okay, so let's take this into meditation. So we release all previous thought now and withdraw our attention inwards.
breathing, grounding. And standing in the love and in the freedom of ourselves as the soul. Orienting now our hearts to the Christ and his ashram. Listening to the mantram of the Christ following this call. Keep close in touch with me and with the master who surveys your life. With us are found the forces of the living light and love which you must use. Keep close to us and day by day draw on the strength and knowledge which we have and which is also yours. Let not disturb the acquiescent calm which keeps you close in touch, which brings you light and understanding and keeps you steadfast on the way. Following this call, let us now make our way to the beautiful building set in nature, which we already know very well now. Entering into the quiet and clear and spacious council chamber of elders in training. taking our places in geometric order. Sensing the atmosphere in the chamber, the geometrical harmony. In the center of the chamber, visualize the flame of our combined, sustained will to love. Let our hearts tune to it. And holding together this space of intent, sustained love, safe space. And tuning now also into the mental aspect, mental space of the council chamber. A calm, clear, lighted space.
It vibrates to the rate of the Ajna center of the planet. So through this vibration, we are linked with our fellow world workers in all nations. Now, staying focused in the group Ashna Center, we mentally extend, reach out now towards the Ashramic world. Gradually fine tuning our vibration, swinging into the Ashramic thought field. Taking a moment. And letting our mental field gently encompass the time span of the last 100 years. Extending our view, releasing all effort, just extending, encompassing these past 100 years just a sense of it. And focusing in now on the development of the new group of world servers, having started at the last conclave, 1925, and developing, let us look at this development in these hundred years. Getting a sense now to where we have reached. What is the current state, current state of development of our world group? What is our presence on the planet today?
and as a world group in close alignment with hierarchy, let us now orient our view towards the hierarchical conclave of 2025. Feeling the magnetic pull of this next seminal event and orienting ourselves, aligning ourselves towards this event. For a moment, inviting into our awareness all that is still not completely aligned, that we should bring into alignment during this last remaining year of preparation on the individual, group, and intergroup level. Let us take couple of minutes for this observation. What still needs to be brought into alignment in our world group to play our part?
we offer ourselves in the service to hierarchy on behalf of humanity. And we stand as calm and solid pillars in the present world turmoil. And holding this inner stance, let us return now to our usual consciousness. Take a moment to let the impression settle and then have a brief sharing. Okay, so please, whoever would like to raise your hand and you will be unmuted. Um, Barbara, your hand was raised. You're unmuted now. Please unmute on your side if you'd like to share. Hello, this is Kathy Heller from Hawaii. My clear, hi, my clear message is, or information is that, that we must be more consciously and fully engaged with the divas, with the elementals, um, so, so such as a ballet dancer in order to have a higher jump, they, they press harder to the, the ground to have those higher leaps. And, and that's, um, that alignment will strengthen our, the power of our connection with the hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Can you say a bit more, Kathy? Uh, yes, there would be, there's, There's, you know, nonverbal, non-intellectual power of alignment with the purity of the intentions of of the, the creation of this planet, and and we are, as we know, um, 
formed by our our the form by different amounts of the various kingdoms to to create our embodiment that our spirits then operate within it's it's very different to operate in matter uh, than it is to be operating in spirit the combination and that's the challenge that we have uh, as a as a monad in in our um, evolution and that that respect deep respect and alignment with the elementals with the uh, which are the consciousness it's a consciousness of sorts that alignment will release us a lot from the egoistic or intellectual cultural Mm -hmm. distortions yeah yeah I am very much resonating with what you're saying thank you thank you for all of this well <clears throat> I can go on Grete from Denmark I have something similar as you, Cassie, uh, this question was, what is still needed? My uh, first word was, more coherence is needed among the, all the groups in the world of the world service. In this telepathic space, which we are creating now. And we need to work uh, more consciously with the devic world they're waiting mm -hmm. for us they can't do it on their own they are they're waiting for us to ask them for the cooperation then we can go on cooperating with them so thank you thank you Greta Um, Barbara, anybody, you're unmuted. If you would like to share, please. No, no. <laughs> no worries. Hi, this is uh, Helen from uh, Israel. Um, this meditation made me enter into a kind of solemn solemnity. Um, of uh, getting close to a threshold of eras like a person who is about to leave this world making evaluations on uh, his or her way or its way to enter a new world and um, for me it's interesting Kathy and Greta that um, I had this sense of uh, a great need to let go of uh, this uh, intellectual uh, anchoring, um, which, uh, as you said, Kathy, also distortions that the mind brings. Uh, that the, maybe the lower mind brings um, and to be more tuned to something uh, more basic like uh, a person who is about to die and has to be uh, to be connected to the essential mm. yeah Thank you. Thank you, Helen.
Here is a geisha in Canada. And I really sense what Helen is offering us, uh, a time of deep inner reflection and quiet as group. You asked us lots of important questions. The overview of the last hundred years this is probably just an intellectual approach, but I think there's heart in it as well. But at the end of the period of war, then through the 50s, 60s, and even the 70s, there was a sense of complacency and well-being amongst people in the global north which caused us perhaps to become drowsy and not be alert to the rise of global evil. Mm -hmm. So we see the world in its state of turmoil today and now we're coming into um, correct relationship with with that what do we as light workers how do we combine from that place of be part the necessity to work together so closely then mm -hmm. you asked about the new group of world servers and at first it felt like different groups around the world. And then I, you said the magnetic pull of the conclave. And I really get that, that we're all being pulled magnetically towards a field of action. So there is mm -hmm. growing coherence among, among the groups, even though they may not be communicating together there is that magnetic pull to one focal point that's becoming a driving force in our work together. That was my sense of it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. Being called to a magnetic field of action. This is Margot from Canada, and I too had a very strong sense of a magnetic pull. Um, it was as if there was an, uh, an upward pull through the group onto Karana, that the, as if the cosmic magnet was drawing everything that needed to be aligned upward into alignment as we stood calm and steady on the ground. So this sense of unifying, being unified and unifying consciously through the magnetic attraction of the cosmic magnet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, we can have another sharing um, a bit later at the end. Um, I would like to now, after we have done this focus on the inner work, inner alignment, higher alignment, uh, to have a look outwards now. Um, 
at our world and uh, of course in these turbulent times it is really difficult to keep up with the massive changes happening everywhere um so we as the budding ajna center of the world we may attempt to hold at least a general overview of where humanity is now in the evolutionary process and where we are heading so let us just name a few coordinates to keep us oriented it's nothing that we don't know but just to keep it in our consciousness so in in broad strokes we see that the piscean and the six ray age is ending being now in its crystallizing and breaking down phase we could say that pluto in capricorn has indeed done a lot in the last decades to deconstruct the old financial and, and power structures. So there's no doubt anymore now that our old world order is crumbling. And that the power structure, power structure of the civilizations is shifting and a multipolar world is in the making, whatever, however that will turn out to be. And uh, we can also see the Aquarian values already starting to make their influence felt, uh, both to the, to the benefit and also not so beneficial, um, being misinterpreted or by still used by by a more materialistic agenda so we see globalism technocracy transhumanism the growth of global corporate power over the sovereignty of nations all these problems and we see a un that needs a fundamental upgrade to get ready for the Aquarian age. We see dark clouds everywhere. It seems all unfinished businesses come up to the surface now to be reviewed and uh, hopefully corrected. And also the fact that we still have wars comes into a painful realization how come that we still have wars um, a question is now put on this more consciously so all this can be seen as humanity's struggle uh, in preparation for the first initiation and painful as it is, we know that it is necessary and that ultimately this will lead to the good. <laughs> but um, meanwhile, there's so much confusion and human suffering and uh, we need to be careful not to drown in it. And um, to keep this overview from the mountain top is really helpful in this to remind ourselves each time of the larger timeline uh, to discern these larger cycles and um, in short to endeavor to see the world as hierarchy does Because we still don't have the capacity to do to do this in detail 
but at least a broad overview we can attempt together in each other's presence that keeps us yeah on the mountain top outside um, the hot drama going on so let us now practice this by looking at our planet from above looking again at the different continents like we did uh, already a few times several months ago and now maybe um, with this perspective of this, this these wider cycles looking at their specific challenges and evolutionary process and uh, this time to use as parameters two of uh, of maybe quite uh, um, central Aquarian values which is freedom and the common good so we will do this meditation it's an observation uh, so it could be helpful to have pen and paper ready to jot down some impressions as we go because there will be some intervals for just observing and also recording if you want. Okay, so let us reconvene in our council chamber. We are situated midway between humanity and hierarchy. Let's just take a moment to realign with the chamber, within the chamber, and with each other. Being aware of being in ever more resonance with hierarchy, working more and more closely with them. So from our high observation point, let us look down, downwards on our planet. And just for a moment, holding her in our loving awareness. Becoming aware of the continents, Europe, Asia, Oceania. Africa, America. And seeing humanity being spread out over these continents and ordered into nations. So from here, let us now tune into each continent in turn starting with North America. Just getting a sense of the forces that are working themselves out within the North American consciousness. The old patterns with which the people in North America are struggling at the moment and how they face the process towards a newer freedom 
and towards the common good as the new bottom line. So the old patterns, the process towards freedom and towards the common good. And we take a couple of minutes for this observation. Okay, moving now our view to South America with the same observation of its process with the old patterns and its move towards freedom and the common good.
Okay. Let us move now towards Europe. Where is Europe now? What processes are underway in crabbling, grappling with its old patterns and striving for freedom and the common good? Okay, and we move to Asia. What is happening at the moment in Asia? Getting a sense of the forces at play, which patterns are being transmuted, and how is it developing? in terms of freedom and the common good.
And let us move our inner eyes now to Oceania. Its old patterns and its process towards freedom and the common good. And now let us turn our attention to Africa. What is Africa working on? How is it dealing with this old stuff, its old stuff? And how is it developing freedom and striving to establish common good? Now, from the council chamber, our last observation, looking out now at humanity as a whole and endeavoring to see it as hierarchy sees it, 
in its present struggle and direction. Okay, releasing now the observation, refocusing in the council chamber for one more moment to just rest and breathe in each other's presence. And gently returning to our individual grounding. Taking a moment to note down any impressions. And when you're ready to share, please raise your hand. This is Margot. There was something I needed to attend to when you first um, gave us the the portion of the world that we're to uh, to observe, and I'm I'm thinking it was North America. In any case, what I wrote was groups, tribes gathering in nations because of race because of purpose, people moving around like iron filings coming into a pattern with a color and sound. And yes, the elementals awaiting our bidding I could feel my brain being acted upon. South America, wisdom, ancient wisdom, 
colonization, moving to more freedom. Europe, still await a shadow over Europe of thought forms, stirrings of movement forward, unifying of action toward freedom, which is rising around the world, still in early stages. Kathy's comments in the first med about David Graham resounding. Asia, thought forms swirling, China rising like a phoenix, then a mental firewall, aware of something behind this firewall trying to communicate. Oceana, clear wisdom which my mind wants to name or judge, an overlay, wanting to detach more and see from a higher perspective, a song starting to come from the land itself. Africa, singing, unifying around the values of love and peace, beginning to free old traditions through education. Rising above, I have a much greater confirmation, more of a um, realization, a knowing there's a plan other than just reading and knowing and having an idea about it. And for the world, finally, there is a plan. We are moving forward, onward, upward, and through. There is room for adjustment, alignment, encouragement, heroism. There is wisdom and medicine within us and on the planet to heal, align, and transform. This was a voice from North America. Maybe we can say when we share now from which continent we come. Hello, uh, Katja Kaufman. Mm, you, uh, North America. Um, as we were moving around the globe, um, this vision came as a reminder that a huge body of humanity is still going in evolutionary direction. And um, 
this coordination between those two wheels. So it goes different direction, yet using the same space mm. and the same tools. And what is already needs to be left behind, and but for some and a huge amount of people, it's not even enough yet. So to have this um, dual movement within the protective triangle, Shambhala, Hierarchy and Humanity, Humanity as a center of distribution of the energy. And the greater body of humanity, which is not an incarnation, really. 52 billion on the other side. Getting prepared. So it's almost like globe within globe. This movement of energy. Which requires a great amount of buddhic energy, energy of will, and um, monadic consciousness hmm. that we connect, you know, at least with. Thank you. Over. Okay, well, what a huge picture. Thank you, Katya. I actually had a similar similar impression what you said now, Katya, was the a huge body of humanity still on the involutionary uh, path. And um um at the same time I was uh, looking at uh, my own culture. Europe, Western culture, and um, even though a lot is going, seems to, to be going in the wrong direction, there's still so much having been gained in the past, also in relation to freedom and the common good, um, which may profitably be retrieved after after coming out of this present hypnosis or i don't know how to call it so i came out um mm -hmm. a bit more optimistic i mean i'm i'm optimistic in the long run but uh yeah having more a sense of what what uh, what is there to work with Um, this is Alexandra, and yet another voice from North America. Um, was an interesting impression uh, as we moved through from continent to continent um, about different proportion of balance of freedom and common good. 
um, there was impression uh, that in the old world the um, sense of the common good uh, is much more established mm. while in the so-called new world or uh, the lands the continents that were colonized by seekers of freedom coming from europe that mm, predominantly europe but of course not only europe that sense of uh, the the balance uh, is more towards the sense of freedom because that's a key quality that define the um, development trajectory for last couple centuries where people were pushed to explore the world finding the new places where freedom uh, is um, the main uh, value and it was that impulse of freedom uh, the hierarchical impulse that expressed through uh, equalities of freedom brotherhood and equality that came by the French Revolution that hierarchical impulse pushed people uh, outward seeking that freedom outer manifestation of freedom and so that's in a way this coming times they will be defined by that struggle to find the right balance between freedom and common good uh, in all this lands and uh, the, the old world is struggling to recognize the value of freedom and I, I'm talking more that was impression for Asia uh, while the notion of common good is uh, a big struggle for understanding of common good in the in the North America but it's those are two there was impression that those are two predominant values that define in a way west and east occident and orient mm. and it's an interesting question for reflection and meditation to reflect on there are some interesting passages of uh, that what dk said about the destiny for a uh, balance of occident and orient Mm -hmm. so interesting to look at that at some point right yeah thank you thanks alexander mm -hmm. Do we have a voice maybe from Oceania? From Africa, we don't have anyone today. From Asia. I only got uh, words that were their stumbling blocks. Nothing that was hopeful as everyone else seems to. The stumbling block that I came in for Africa was raw anger and greed. And the stumbling block for Asia was power. 
just those two. I had others, mm. but the, the two you. That's it. Who is who are you? I I cannot see who is speaking. Oh, this is Kiki speaking, from Washington I... D.C. Okay, thanks, Kiki. Thank you. What was the stumbling block for Asia again? Um, this is, for Asia was power. Power, okay. The greed mm -hmm. of power. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, if anyone else would like to share before we close. All right. Alexander, you want to do some announcements? Yes, we're getting very close to the exact time of the Umun. Uh, it's uh, actually four hours. So I want to announce our togetherness, standing together these hours of the high potency. Let us look at our spread around the world and sense our physical presence in all these different locations around the world as we hold the tension of the full moon. Mm. And please join us tomorrow at the same time for the gathering in the garden where we will continue reflection on the potency of the light superior coming through Capricorn. Thank you, Uta. Okay, our next lab, lab uh, Nations Lab session will be on the 23rd of January next year. So let us just uh, make a little closure, aligning for another moment in our council chamber, holding for a moment all that we have received and perceived. And giving gratitude to our co-workers in the ashram. and our Devik co-workers. Let us now streamline our hearts one more time with the flame of the will to love in the center of our council chamber and letting it pour through each of us into our own nation. and onwards, see it flowing into the entire field of the family of nations. We affirm the will to right relations between all nations. And returning now to our personal field, our physical surroundings, wherever we are, letting our light shine and grounding it as a blessing into the earth.
Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.